This woman is a mummy that has survived for 5,000 years. At this time, her whole body is covered with bizarre runes. Strong chains were holding her in place. The syringes at her wrists and neck are injecting mercury into her body every minute of every day. Legend has it that this can suppress the power of demons. Because once the woman breaks free from the seal, her power can easily summon a sandstorm. Even the destruction of the world is just a snap of the fingers. The woman's name is Amanet. 5,000 years ago, she was a beautiful princess and the only heir to the Egyptian throne. She would have been the supreme queen. But one day, her father's consort managed to give birth to a son. This boy would take over her position in the future. Amunet did not resign herself to her fate. She used her blood to summon Seth, the god of death. She was willing to give everything to fulfill her ambition. Seth finally gave her great power. The spell of darkness soon spread throughout her body. From then on, Amunet became a demon serving the god of death. Not only did she kill her father with her own hands, even her youngest brother was not spared. Now, if she kills this man in front of her, the god of death could come back inside him. Just as she was about to strike, Pharaoh's guards finally arrived in time. They used poison needles to paralyze Amunet so that she could not use her magic powers. The princess was then subjected to the most brutal of punishments. Her body was to be mummified. Her body was then sealed in a coffin of death for eternity. The sarcophagus was eventually banished to a place far from Egypt. It will be buried in the abyss, forever in endless darkness. Until the time comes 5,000 years later, with a missile bombing of a village in Iraq. Inadvertently, the tomb that sealed the princess was also blown up. The military received the news and quickly sealed off the site. Then, archaeologist Jenny also arrived here, led by special agent Nick and Vale. The trio soon entered the tomb. Here is a huge underground space. As soon as they entered the ground, they found mercury flowing everywhere here. In ancient Egyptian mythology, mercury can weaken the power of demons. When the crowd approached the tomb, they were completely stunned by the scene in front of them. In front of them was a deep pit where mercury had gathered. Around it, there were a large number of idols guarding. They were all facing inward instead of outward. This means that their role is to seal rather than guard. And from the bottom of the pool, Three chains protruded. Their function is to lock the demon at the bottom of the well. With these clues in front of her, Jenny quickly made a judgment. This is not a tomb at all but an ancient Egyptian prison used to seal the demon. At this point, Nick found the switch to fix the chain. As he shot to break the chain, the gears quickly began to turn. The sarcophagus buried deep in the water was also slowly pulled up. When they saw the pattern on the sarcophagus's surface, the three immediately felt a chill. And as Nick watched, a vision began to appear before his eyes. In the middle of the endless desert, a graceful figure was walking slowly toward him. As he drew closer, the woman's face became clearer and clearer. Just when he was about to kiss Nick, he was awakened by Jenny in time. At that moment, a large number of spiders suddenly emerged from the cave. Vale was inadvertently bitten by a spider. He immediately grabbed his rifle and fired wildly, but the bullets did very little damage. The trio immediately prepared to evacuate. The military then used a helicopter to lift the stone pass out of the tomb. And with the sarcophagus out of the way, a large number of crows suddenly gathered outside. The crowd did not care about these strange situations. They loaded the sarcophagus onto the plane and prepared to bring it back to the base for further research. But just as the plane was taking off, the weather was originally clear and sunny, but suddenly a sandstorm blew up. On the plane, Vale walked up to the sarcophagus. He used the dagger in his hand to start cutting the fixation belt. Just when his comrades came forward to check the situation, he actually stabbed the dagger directly into each other's body. It was then that the crowd realized that Vale was out of control. As he continued to approach with the knife, Vale was now unresponsive. No matter how many people around him called out to him, seeing that they were about to be hurt, Nick had no choice but to pull the trigger when the crowd was in a state of shock. The plane suddenly began to lurch violently. A crow hit the glass directly. When everyone looked up, there were more crows in front of them. Crows smashed into the windshield. And with the death of the pilot, the plane immediately lost control. It began to crash rapidly toward the ground. At the critical moment, Nick gave the only parachute to Jenny, and he had to follow the plane to crash together. By the time the search and rescue team arrived, there was no surviving life at the scene, and the transport sarcophagus was also opened. Someone soon found the mummy covered in cloth. 
Just as he was about to get closer to check it out, the mummy pounced on him instantly. It could directly suck the life out of humans, and as the man turned into a dry corpse, the mummy bizarrely began to grow flesh and blood. And as he called out, the man who had just died also stood up again. At that moment, in the morgue, a corpse suddenly sat up. The man who woke up was the same Nick who was confirmed dead. When he turned around, Vale, who had also died earlier, appeared behind him. It turns out that after a spider bit him, his body had been cursed by the princess, and Vale told Nick, he was also a target chosen by the gods of death. Just when Nick could not believe it, Jenny also came in to claim the body at this time. The two of them quickly made their way to the bar. Nick wasn't sure of his current state. He had no chance of surviving, and there were no injuries on his body. At this point, Jenny revealed her archaeological findings. In the history of ancient Egypt, a princess was erased from the annals of history. Legend has it that she had a blade of Seth. The gem set on it was the Eye of Death. Once the jewel and the dagger become one, it can bring the god of death back to Earth. The sarcophagus they unearthed this time was sealed with the mummy of Princess Amunet. The blade of Set was also brought back to Europe during the invasion. The people separated the gem from the dagger. The Eye of Death was buried in the ground with a bishop. And the location of the dagger is still unknown. Now that Princess Amunet has broken the seal, she will definitely refuse the blade of Set. While they were talking, Nick saw Vale waving at him again. At first, he thought it was an illusion until Vale appeared directly from the mirror. Nick believed that Vale was not lying to him. He told Nick, now they are both cursed, and Nick is the one chosen by the gods of death. Once Amunet kills him with the full seat's blade, then death will use it to reappear on Earth. Nick was overwhelmed by the sudden news. Just as he was about to calm down, a mummy had come for him. A crowd of rats followed it. They quickly rushed toward Nick's body. As the rats surrounded him and devoured him, the mummies in the distance were close by. At this time, with a beam of light, Nick finally regained consciousness. It turns out that all this is just his hallucination. The succession of bizarre events made Nick completely panic. He led Jenny to a dilapidated convent according to the image that suddenly appeared in his mind. In the darkness, the two soon got separated. While Nick was looking around, the door of the church slowly opened. The princess had regained her beauty. In the moment when Nick was lost in thought, several mummies grabbed him. Next, Amunet jumped on Nick. After confirming that Nick was the one chosen by the god of death, she smashed the angel statue in front of her. Inside was hidden the long-lost blade of Seth. Just as she was about to plunge it into Nick's body, Amunet stopped at the last minute. He found that the eye of death on the dagger had disappeared. Just as the princess was getting angry, Jenny found the place too. The princess immediately began to attack. Jenny was instantly thrown away. Nick also took the opportunity to get rid of the mummy's control. Just when the princess was about to kill Jenny, Nick grabbed the dagger and stabbed the princess's body. The two then escaped from the church. They drove the car to escape quickly, but soon, a mummy caught up with them. In their entanglement, the car also eventually lost control. Both of them fell down the hill together. Just as Nick was about to rescue Jenny, the princess came out of the mist again. Nick saw the situation and grabbed a wooden stick and rushed up. But soon, he was knocked out by a punch. Just when the princess wanted to kill Jenny first, a sharp arrow pierced her body instantly. Then more iron hooks bound her firmly. It turned out that the research organization behind Jenny had found the place. Amunet was then taken back to the base. The leader of the base also told Nick not to let Amunet summon the Grim Reaper, because once the Grim Reaper takes over Nick's body, then the whole world will be devastated. Looking at Princess Amunet, who had been completely imprisoned, Nick slowly walked forward, and as they looked at each other, Nick fell into a vision again. It turns out that he was chosen by the god of death in his past life. Amunet continued to tempt Nick with the illusion, if he succeeded in summoning the god of death, Seth, then he will not only be able to control the power of life and death, even the princess will become Nick's woman. Just when Nick was about to sink, along with the princess scream, Nick finally came out of the illusion. The doctor saw that the situation was not right and increased the infusion of mercury into Amunet's body. Seeing her plan fail again, the princess's eyes were already full of anger. Meanwhile, another archaeological team was excavating the crusader's tomb. Just after they opened the coffin, they unexpectedly found a red gem. The princess in the distance also immediately sensed it. It turned out that it was the lost eye of death. Then the princess also started to recite the incantation. A holy beetle slowly crawled out. It crept into the ear of a staff member. Immediately after, the man's pupils began to white. 
She first turned off the princess's mercury syringe, then picked up the axe and walked out. He directly destroyed the power supply of the laboratory. The princess's power immediately began to return. She first eliminated all the mercury from her body. Then she was ready to break free from the chains. The guards tried to stop her at this point, but he was clearly out of his depth. And in the blink of an eye he was sucked into a dry corpse by the princess. The princess, who had regained her full strength, immediately began to recite an incantation. She summoned the yellow sand to bring Nick back to her side. A sandstorm began to envelop the city, and everyone was fleeing quickly, but the sand was everywhere, and they had no chance to escape. Just when Nick is desperate, Vale reappears. He tells Nick that if he wants to stop this, he must destroy the Eye of Death. He leads Nick to the tomb where the gem is located, but they didn't know that Amonet had also arrived here. By this time, the tomb was on alert, but with the princess incantation, she awakened the dryad that had been sleeping for a thousand years. The guards were immediately attacked. She easily eliminated all the guards without any effort. When Amonet entered the tomb, all the dryads were on their knees. She also got back the Eye of Death. The Blade of Seth was finally back intact. On the other hand, Nick and Jenny encountered constant attacks from the mummies on their way here. Although Nick can easily solve them, but the number of enemies is simply endless. They can only escape along the passage. They were soon knocked into the water by the sudden attack. When they tried their best to surface, the princess came behind them. Jenny was dragged directly into the water by her. Nick could only watch as the two disappeared from sight. And mummies appearing in the water one after another. They are in pursuit of Nick. He had no choice but to resurface. He didn't realize that the mummies were waiting for him there. And at this time, Nick also found that Jenny had lost her life next to him. Just when Nick was angry, the princess also reappeared. All the mummies were turned into ashes and scattered. She will continue the unfinished ritual of 5,000 years ago. At this time, Nick still tried to resist, but the princess knocked him to the ground in one move. However, the princess also found that her blade of Seth had disappeared from her hand. It turned out that Nick had just taken advantage of the opportunity to seize the dagger. He immediately smashed the Eye of Death on the ground with great force. As long as this gem is broken, then all the curses will disappear. However, at this time, the princess told Nick, if he could master the power of death, then he could revive Jenny. Nick resolutely thrust the dagger into his body. Immediately, evil forces began to invade. The spirit of death also began to descend on his body. As Nick opened his eyes again, his eyes have appeared double pupils. But the princess looked at the figure approaching slowly, but she did not feel the breath of death. It turned out that Nick, with his belief in justice, had successfully defeated the will of death. The princess was still thinking of waking up death, but she herself was easily repulsed. He did not hesitate to retrieve the princess's immortal body. Then, Nick used the power of death again to revive Jenny, but he knew he was no longer a normal human being. Nick finally chose to leave alone. At the end of the film, the princess was once again put into a sarcophagus and sealed. And Nick also used the power of death to resurrect the good brother Vale. They will continue their journey together to find a way to break the curse. Only by becoming human again can he return to find the one he loves most. End of the movie. Remember to subscribe to my channel. We will see you next time.